Book Friend Group. 16065-5849 A newly graduated quasi-naval command trainee who drifts into the world of the blue line what would he do? Going home or staying? Having gone through numerous tests and choices with his crew, kind-hearted. Cruel. Is that right or not? The big picture. If it were you, how would you make a decision? Keywords of the novel. My ship mother, my world without pop-ups, my ship mother, my world complete collection download, my ship mother, my world latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. This is not my world. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1. This is not my world struggling to open his sleepy eyes, Chin Go felt a pang of pain on his body. The sunlight in his eyes told him that he was not dead yet, so he couldn't help but take a long sigh of relief. Slightly struggling, Chin Gu got up from the ground, but the sight in front of him left him stunned. I remember being dragged into the river because of saving someone, but what is this? Chin Gu is a top student at the NJ Naval Command Academy. When she was about to leave the company after graduation, she went to sweep the graves of her parents. When she returned, she was swept into the river to save someone, but ended up here. Following Qin Ji's gaze, his current position was no longer on the river or on the riverbank. His past life experience told him that this must be the coast, and it is also the coast where battles are taking place. As far as my gaze could see, a ship, all black and emitting an inexplicable red light, was floating on the sea. Several ferocious gun barrels on the ship's hull protruded from the turret above the deck. Chin Gu swore, as a student of the Naval Command Academy, that he had never seen such a warship, even the whole earth had never seen it, and even if he had seen it, it was still in some science fiction works. Just as he was thinking this, the muzzle of the ship slowly turned, as if aiming in his direction. Run. This is the first and last thought in Qin Ji's heart. Dragging his already exhausted body, Qin Gu ran along the coastline. Based on his experience, the explosion range of shells is limited, especially on the beach. Boom! The eerie warship fired, and the shells exploded fiercely at the position where Qin Gu had just stood. In the midst of the scattered flames, he had already run out for several tens of meters and was still hit by the aftershocks of the explosion, lying on the ground. The pain swept through Qin Ji's body, and he felt like he was torn apart. He couldn't stand up now. But the eerie warship began slowly adjusting its turrets again, aiming its dark barrel towards the direction of Qin Ji's downfall. Dead. This was Qin Ji's only thought now. He didn't realize that he hadn't died saving people, but was about to die under the shelling of this warship. He closed his eyes in despair and waited quietly for the shell to arrive. Boom! A loud bang came, and Qin Gu, who had already closed his eyes, suddenly opened them. He felt like he wasn't dead, was it that the warship had missed the mark? With a sense of survival, Qin Gu looked towards the direction of the warship, but everything in sight completely shook his three senses. He saw a petite woman appear on the side of the warship, with white hair combed into a single ponytail, looking like a 12.13-year-old junior high school student. But what shocked Qin Gu was not here, but when he saw this girl sliding on the water, and there was a decoration on her left hand that looked like a single mounted gun, and on her side, there was something like ordinary ship parts bound. No, Qin Gu is sure that it's not just a decoration, because just as he was looking, another firelight shot out from the single mounted gun in the girl's hand, hitting the eerie warship, and the shell exploded on its turret. I think the shelling that saved me just now was fired by the single gun in the girl's hand. And the warship was also attracted by the sudden appearance of the girl, even though one turret was blown up, it still rotated the other turrets and secondary gun modules to fire at the girl. Little. Heart. Before Chin Gu could say anything, she saw the girl easily dodge the shells fired by the warship. At the same time, four torpedoes on a plate that looked like a torpedo launcher on the side of the girl's body slid directly into the sea, rushing towards the warship with waves, and the single gun in the girl's hand never stopped attacking. 
When she saw that the torpedo was almost approaching the warship, the girl stopped moving forward sideways and slid towards the side. At this moment, a loud bang came, and four torpedoes accurately hit the eerie warship. The flames exploded on the sea, and the wreckage of the warship scattered and flew, reflecting on the eerie girl like the warship. This scene was so heart-wrenching. What the hell is this? Chin Gu felt numb when he saw this scene. He could be certain that there were no such warships or girls on Earth, and this was definitely not Earth. But is it a dream? But the pain all over his body told him that this was not a dream at all, so where exactly is this? Just as Chin Gu was lost in doubt, a yacht-style ship appeared in his field of vision, and the direction of that ship was clearly here with him. And the girl who had just fired the shell was slowly approaching the yacht, sliding towards her direction together. It's not a disaster, it's a disaster that can't be avoided. Chin Gu sat in the same place with such a mentality, waiting for the arrival of the ship and the girl. Quickly, the yacht docked in the shallow waters, and a young man dressed in a white navy uniform emerged from the yacht. However, Chin Gu, with his sharp eyes, noticed that the navy uniform he was wearing looked very different from his usual one, but in some details, it was very different. Firstly, there is the rank, which is the most prominent symbol on military uniforms. As a student, there is only one horizontal bar above the rank. But the style of the opponent's military rank is not the standard rank of the People's Navy, nor is it the rank of Europe and America. It is a military rank that one has never seen before, and the military emblem on the hat is actually a dragon. While he was observing, the young man shook his hand at him and said, Are you okay? The authentic Mandarin dispelled Qin Ji's original concerns. He struggled to stand up and walked towards the direction of the ship. Fortunately, he wasn't killed by the explosion, he said, hee hee, you are also very lucky. You can stand up even after being hit by a siren mass dot produced destroyer, that's amazing, the young man said with admiration on his face. I am Su Xian from the Yulon fleet, and this is my ship mother, Tang Si. What's your name, isn't it a local? In fact, at this moment, Qin Gu was a bit confused. The siren mass dot produced destroyer, the large fleet, and the ship mother reminded him of a mobile game that his classmates had once facilitated for him, the Blue Route. However, because I was solely focused on conducting tactical research and other related topics at that time, I didn't pay much attention to my friend's interests. As a result, I have actually come into this world now. What's wrong, is there any sequelae? Su Xian asked Qin Gu, who was somewhat confused. Qin Gu shook her head and said, My name is Qin Gu, but I don't know how I got to this place. I don't know. Su Xian pondered, propping his chin. I know. It must have been the sirens shelling just now that left you with after effects, so you forgot how you came here. Hmm, that's right, I'm really smart. Commander, you have enough, said Tang Si standing beside the yacht on the sea surface, ah, uh, isn't that right? Su Xian looked at Tang Si and said. Qin Gu smiled and shook her head, it's probably like this. See, I'm right, it must be a sequelae. Su Xian proudly said to Tang Si, who was speechless on the side, and then turned to Qin Gu. Since that's the case, I can't ignore it. The commander's duty is to ensure the safety of the coastline, let alone the area where our fleet is stationed. Qin Gu, get on the ship and I'll take you out of this area. Qin Gu nodded. Instead of staying in place and waiting to die, it was better to board the yacht of the commander named Su Xian and get to know a world he didn't know, a world he didn't belong to. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Su Xian You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Su Xian When everyone got on the boat, Qin Gu saw another girl at the helm's position on the yacht. If he guessed correctly, this girl was also a ship girl. Sure enough, Su Xian introduced herself very well and said, This is also my ship mother. Her name is Aratosa, she's good at everything, but she has a bit of a temper. I wouldn't admit a commander like you, 
humph, Su Xian was just saying, and Aratosa shouted at him. That's right, that's it. Su Xian blinked at Qin Gu, then turned around and went over to apologize to Aratosa. But at this moment, Qin Ji's thoughts were flying, it was truly a magical world, a world he never dared to imagine. As a graduate of the Naval Command Academy, he naturally studied warships from various countries around the world, and his subject was the study of campaign theory. He had delved into famous naval battles in history. Su Xian's two warships, one of which was based on the U.S. Imperial Navy's Mahan class destroyer No. 12, the Tang's class destroyer, and the other was the Aratosa class light cruiser No. 1, the Aratosa class light cruiser of the Dang Navy. But their prototype ships, one a 1500 ton destroyer and the other a 5220 ton light cruiser, have now become two young and beautiful girls. It's really unbelievable. Qin Gu looked at Su Xian, who was apologizing to Aratosa, and whispered softly. What's unbelievable? Tang Si, who had been tinkering with her things as soon as Qin Gu was surprised, looked at him and said. Qin Gu glanced at Tang Si and said, I mean the relationship between your commander and Aratosa. Oh, normal. Tang Si said a word and stopped talking, continuing to tinker with the things in her hand. Qin Gu saw clearly from here that it was a detonator, and it was a detonator with high-intensity explosives. If not operated properly, it could completely explode the things here. Qin Ji's forehead couldn't help but shed a cold sweat. Is the world of the ship mother so exciting? Is it okay to just do this without any protective measures? Can I just leave the tiger's mouth and come back to the wolf's den? Hey, what are you looking at? Su Xian walked over and patted Qin Ji's shoulder. Qin Ji's muscles stiffened and he immediately relaxed. He raised his finger and pointed to Tang Si, who was tinkering with the detonator. Are your commanders and ship women so stimulated every day? Su Xian followed Qin Ji's fingers and saw Tang Si holding a detonator. Oh, it's okay. Tang Si is an outstanding explosive genius, and her favorite thing to do is to fry fish. These things are all made by her own. Although they may seem to have some safety issues, the effect is still good when used. Hee hee, the commander is becoming more and more discerning. Upon hearing Su Xian's words, Tang Si excitedly lifted his head and said to Su Xian, with a completely different attitude from when he first faced Qin Gu. Oh, isn't this what you cultivated? Su Xian said with a smile, but let's not fry the fish today. Let's go back to the port and have a good meal then. Okay, Tang Si nodded, and the detonator disappeared from her hand like a magic trick. Qin Gu was stunned by this scene. Seeing Tang Si put away the detonator, Su Xian nodded and said to Qin Gu beside him, there is still a little distance from the port where our fleet is located. It will probably arrive when it's getting dark. You've just been so stimulated, so let's take a break for now. I don't need to rest anymore, I have to hold on for now. And since your yacht is so clean, I don't need to be like this anymore. It's better for me to go to the deck and be able to return to land. Thank you very much. Qin Gu smiled and pointed to her navy uniform pants and shirt, which had become pitch black, and said to Su Xian. Um. I didn't think twice, but to be honest, there's really nothing you can wear on this ship. Su Xian said awkwardly, because his height was only about 1.72 meters, but Qin Ji's height across from him was at least 1.85 meters. Don't go over to the deck, just sit in the cabin, otherwise I'll appear too harsh. Seeing Su Xian's insistence, Qin Gu couldn't refuse either. After expressing gratitude, she sat in the corner of the cabin as usual, while Su Xian temporarily went to attend to his affairs. After sitting for a while, Qin Gu, who had nothing to do, prepared to lean against the wall and close his eyes to rest for a while. However, by chance, he stumbled upon a stack of randomly placed books next to him. With curiosity, he took one and prepared to flip through it to read the words of this world. Holding the book in front of me, 
I saw that the text on it was still square Chinese characters. Qin Gu breathed a sigh of relief. Since there were no barriers to language and writing, there was no problem surviving in this world. As for how to return to his previous world, he can only take it slowly. The title of the book was, On the Decisive Role of Commanders in Naval Warfare, which immediately aroused Qin Ji's interest. He wanted to see the differences and commonalities between naval battles in this world and his own original world. So he quickly flipped through the pages of the book, and time began to slip away quietly with his concentration. At this moment, Su Xian was looking at a chart in a room on the yacht when the door suddenly opened and Tang Si entered. Su Xian asked without even looking up, What is that Qin Gu doing? Sitting in the corner reading a book, Tang Si said, jumping onto the chair opposite Su Xian and looking at him. Reading. After hearing this answer, Su Xian looked up with great interest at Tang Si across from him and said, I remember the books that were placed in the corner before were all the ones that the previous commander asked me to study, right? That's right, they are all theoretical books that commanders dislike the most, Tang Si nodded and chuckled. What is a theoretical book that I dislike? It's clear that those books are too profound in their reasoning, and how could small fleets like us face such group-style sea battles? Let me see, improving your training and ship equipment strength is the right thing. Su Xian rolled his eyes and said, looking at Tang Si's smiling eyes. However, after all, those theoretical books on sea battles need to have a certain theoretical foundation to be understood. It seems that Qin Ji's physique is not simple. Moreover, from his standing and sitting posture, speech, walking movements, and some small details, it can be seen. He's like a soldier. Do you think it's possible that he's an army, towns, my commander, the army has retreated inland to form a defensive front? Do you think there will be a separate army appearing in that place? Towns said helplessly. Well, that's right. Su Xian nodded, but that position is on the edge of our defense zone, not the commander's, so we can't get close at all, right? Tang Si shook his head very confidently and said, It's impossible, he doesn't have the smell of a ship woman on him. Not a commander, but someone with a military style and the ability to understand naval campaign theory is really rare, Su Xian sighed with a smile. And I can see that he really doesn't know where he is, and before the commander introduces you, he seems to have no idea about the world, said Downs. Interestingly, you said, if I recommend him to my alma mater, will the principal let me enter the school in the future? Su Xian said to Tang Si with a sudden idea. Perhaps she will still make you lose money. Tang Si hesitated for a moment and said. Losing money. Su Xian's head suddenly widened. Why did you remember to blow up the principal's favorite garden back then? Because there are fish in the pond, I love to fry fish the most. So. It was just a mistake that time. The dosage of the explosives was a bit too high. If it were to happen again, I would definitely only fry the pond, Tang said with a certain expression. Ha! Do you want to do it again? Give me a break. Su Xian let out a scream and lay on the table, unable to get up again, end of this chapter. Do you want to become a commander in chapter 3? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Do you want to become a commander in chapter 3? Are you interested in becoming a commander? When Su Xian asked this question to Qin Gu who was reading a book, he was confused, especially when Su Xian was smiling. Qin Gu instinctively felt that he seemed to be doing pyramid schemes. What does it mean? Qin Gu put down the book in her hand and said to Su Xian. Qin Gu, are you from a military background? Su Xian did not directly answer Qin Ji's question, but asked a new one without giving him any chance to answer. There is no denying that from your standing and sitting posture, your speech and behavior are very obvious, especially this thing that I find difficult to read after learning. You can actually read it with great interest. With this, he picked up the book on the decisive role of commanders in naval warfare that Qin Gu had just put down. Cough. 
Qin Guk coughed for a moment, feeling somewhat helpless. As expected, she had not yet stepped out of the learning atmosphere in the college, and whenever she encountered a topic of interest, she couldn't help but fall into it. So I'm curious, why aren't talents like you commanders? Although I know many talented people didn't become commanders due to their own and mental Rubik's Cube adaptation rates not meeting the standards, they are also working in the headquarters. And you obviously don't seem to be one of them, and I don't think you're the kind of person who is greedy for life and afraid of death. Can you tell me why? Su Xian looked at Qin Gu and said solemnly. I don't know, even I haven't figured out the basic situation yet. Qin Gu was honest and understood that if he told lies now, it would become using countless lies to round them up in the future. It's better to be direct now, avoid some major questions, and be honest. It seems that what I just said is correct. Under the shelling of the Siren Destroyer, you must have left behind some aftermath, Su Xian said seriously. Perhaps, Qin Gu smiled helplessly. So, do you want to become a commander? Su Xian asked the original question again. Can you tell me what the commander needs to do? Qin Gu said as he asked the question again upon hearing Qin Gu ask this question, Su Xian immediately sat up straight and said, Commander, this is a great profession. Its responsibility is to guard, protect the coastline, and safeguard the future of humanity. Every commander is a hero among humanity, and their actions are to help humanity regain the coast and move towards the ocean again. Why? Is it because of those siren ships? Qin Gu looked at Su Xian's solemn tone and couldn't help but ask seriously. Yes, Su Xian's tone became a bit heavy. Many years ago, when humans were still in a civil war, the ocean was still human territory, but when the sirens appeared, everything changed completely. They descended from the sky and destroyed the entire human fleet with powerful firepower, forcing humans to move away from the coast and back inland. Since then, humans have lost the ocean and coastal coastline. But in times of adversity, there are always unwilling people who wander along the coastline, trying to use the only remaining means to strike the sirens, but all have failed. And in this desperate moment, they found the young girls in the sea who were fighting against the sirens, and those girls were our current ship mothers. In this way, they formed an alliance with those girls and formed an effective force against the sirens, becoming the first generation of ship maidens and commanders. Later, step by step, human beings were able to return to coastal cities to live today. Although they sometimes faced attacks from sirens, they were much better than the days when they could only retreat inland. It is a very plain story, but it carries a lot of weight in the heart of Qin Gu. He cannot imagine the feeling of humans being driven away by those sirens to the point of being confined to the inland. But his former National Navy also experienced the tragedy of burning a ship to keep the invaders out of the inland. The commander Su Xian just mentioned, like his predecessors before him, are all respected men. However, I'm sorry I can't promise you for the time being because I have more important things to do, Qin Gu said. Even though those commanders are highly respected, his top priority now is to go home and return to the world that originally belonged to him. Yes, everyone has their own ideals, and we cannot be too harsh on everyone for what they do. This is just my expectation. I just hope that more people will join us and guard the future of humanity together. Su Xian nodded, prepared in advance for Qin Ji's refusal, after all, he cannot force others to do anything, let alone Qin Gu, who is still a stranger for the first time. Sorry, you are a brave group of people, Qin Gu said, and he lowered his head and remained silent. They are all bloodthirsty men, how could they not be touched by their deeds, but they also have their own responsibilities and missions, go back to their own world, use what they have learned, and serve their country. Su Xian shrugged and smiled at Qin Gu, saying, It's okay, the ship will arrive soon, and you can return to land. If you need help, go to the local maritime bureau, and they will do their best to help you. Thank you. Qin Gu looked up and nodded at Su Xian. In his eyes, there was a majestic light shining on Su Xian at this moment. You're welcome, 
guarding every human being is what our commander should do. Su Xian smiled and finished, then walked back into the cabin with Tang Si. The engine of the yacht outside was still ringing, and Qin Gu rested her head on the wall, feeling a little confused. Can she still go home? Classmates, mentors, familiar faces flashed in front of him one by one. Qin Gu couldn't help but murmur, perhaps they already think I'm dead, right? Is it true that crossing this world and continuing to live is a good thing with good karma? If there is really good karma, let me go home. But no one answered him, and he suddenly felt a bit cold. He desperately huddled himself up, but felt that it was just a futile effort. Qin Gu reluctantly stretched out his body again and reached out to stroke his head, saying, what should I do? And just as he was feeling melancholy, the sound of the engine outside slowed down, and he knew he was almost on the shore. We're here. Su Xian's cheerful voice rang out, and Qin Gu quickly stood up and walked towards the direction of the cabin door. Stepping out of the cabin door, Su Xian jumped onto the dock by the light, and was already standing there with his ship mother, Tang Si and Aratosa. Seeing Qin Gu walking in front of him, Su Xian took out a larger envelope from his pocket and handed it to him. It contained a map of this city and some money, as well as a letter of recommendation from the Blue Root Command Academy that I personally wrote. Don't rush to refuse. You look like this and have injuries on your body. If you don't rest and recover properly, you may have to leave a disability. I don't have much money on me, so after I use up all of it, you have to find a way. And this letter is with you. The academy starts in September, and you still have two months to consider whether to go or not. Qin Gu looked at Su Xian's smiling gaze and nodded heavily. He solemnly took the envelope from his hand, which was as heavy as a thousand pounds for him. Thank you. No need to thank you, this is what our commander should do. Su Xian finished speaking with a proud expression and waved his hand at Qin Gu. All right, then we have a chance to meet again. I'm leaving. After Su Xian finished speaking, he casually turned around and left the dock with his two ship maidens. And Qin Gu stood straight in place, watching the backs of Su Xian and the others disappear before holding the envelope in front of him. Is it destined to meet again? End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Be a Damn Commander you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Be a Damn Commander No Qin Gu placed the book in her hand on the table and sighed as she looked at the thick pile of books stacked in front of her. He has been in this world for over a month now, and with the support of Su Xian at that time, he has gone through the most difficult period at the beginning. After recovering his health, he began to work part-time in the city while searching for ways to go home, and the library became the place where Qin Gu came the most. He has almost flipped through books related to space, time, ocean currents, river currents, history, and so on, but seeing his expression, one can also tell that he has been searching for so long but still hasn't found a way home. However, it is not entirely without gains. With more books read, Qin Gu has gained a deeper understanding of the world. Even the longer he lives here, the more inexplicably familiar he becomes. The history of this world is basically the same as that of Earth, but unlike Earth, this planet is called Blue Star, and the country or faction it belongs to is called Donghuang, a familiar yet unfamiliar term. In addition to the faction of the Eastern Emperor, there are several major forces above the Blue Star, including Northern Alliance, White Eagle, Royal, Heavy Sakura, Iron Blood, Free Iris, Maintaining the Holy Sea, and the Sardinian Empire. After trying to compare them with several large countries in the world, Qin Gu found that everything was so similar. However, due to the existence of sirens in this world, there is almost no internal conflict between factions. Humans have a common enemy, which is the sirens. As Su Xian mentioned before, after several generations of efforts, the commanders, together with the ship mother, drove the sirens out of the nearshore. However, there were still sirens passing through various port areas to form a defense network, ready to attack humans at any time. 
It's really a cruel world. When Qin Gu knew all of this, he sighed like this. Unlike ordinary people, he studies warfare and understands what lies behind it. That's not glory, that's not victory, it's made up of piles of bones. Where is the saying that war does not bleed? Where is the saying that war is laughter and joy? As I often hear in my own country, where is time to be quiet? It's just someone carrying a heavy burden and moving forward. In the history of the world he learned about, few commanders had a good ending, and most commanders and their ships sacrificed themselves either on the charge or on the retreat to protect humanity along the coast. They never fear death, they only sacrifice their lives for their ideals. At the moment they become commanders, they are ready to merge with the sea. Then, turning his gaze back to the table, a relatively small booklet appeared in front of him. The book was called, Miscellaneous Talks of the Ship Mother, and Qin Gu quickly flipped through it, hoping to find something useful. Finally, on one page, he saw familiar words and also discovered something strange that had always been there. These ship women don't seem to come from this world, they each have their own systematic affiliations and the same battles. For example, the Danish Strait, such as Mariana. Yes, why do I keep forgetting what I see in front of me? These ship maidens are obviously the incarnations of the battleships of World War I and World War II that I am familiar with, but this world does not have World War I and World War II, perhaps with a long sigh, Qin Gu cast her gaze onto the letter next to the stack of books. Seeing the delicate handwriting on the letter, Qin Gu saw Su Xian's proud smile again in front of him. He looked at it quietly for a long time and said, Commander. What a group of crazy people. What a lovely group of people. Qin Gu suddenly stood up, no longer looking bewildered as before, just like the energetic look in the academy before. He picked up the envelope from the table and put it into his shirt pocket. Quickly tidy up the books on the desk, then hold them and walk to the counter of the library. Hello, return the book. Qin Gu smiled and said to the librarian. Oh, it's you. Because Qin Gu has been coming over frequently lately, the librarian has already remembered him. What's wrong? It ended so early today. Qin Gu smiled and said, I've already found what I'm looking for, so there's no need to waste time here anymore. Oh, congratulations then. The librarian smiled slightly, feeling a difference from what Qin Gu said when he arrived today. Since you found what you're looking for, don't lose it. Otherwise, if you try to find it again, you'll have to spend a lot of time. Sure, we'll see you later, Qin Gu nodded and smiled slightly at the librarian. We will meet later. Coming out of the library, Qin Gu walked towards her temporary residence, which was a breakfast shop owned by two elderly people. Because the breakfast shop only operates until around 11 or 12, noon, he can freely go to the library to search for information in the later time, so he worked part dot time there during this period. Pushing open the somewhat heavy door, an old man was lying on a rocking chair, fanning his fan, shaking it awkwardly. Qin Gu chuckled lightly and said, Wan Lao, are you slacking off again? Be careful not to see the old lady chasing you with a rolling pin all over the street. She dares. The old man, who was called Wan Lao by Qin Gu, put down his fan and jumped up, turning his head to see Qin Gu. He rolled his eyes and said, It's your little boy. I'll tell you who dares to tease the old man and me. And Xiao Qin, I've told you many times, don't call me Wan Lao, call me Wan Lao all day long. What if Wan Lao calls me old? He he, I'm used to it, but I can't change it, Qin Gu said with a smile. Wan Lao, where's Auntie? Lao Wan. Lao Wan glared at Qin Gu and then said, Your aunt has gone to see her daughter, she will only come back tonight. I'll say you're so leisurely today. It turns out that auntie isn't here, Qin Gu joked. Even if she's with me, this family still has the surname Wan, she can't turn the tables. Lao Wan's face turned red and he shouted loudly at Qin Gu. Oh, that's it. I understand. I'll let Auntie know when she comes back tonight, 
Qin Gu said as she walked towards her room. I told you, you little boy, you rarely come back early today. As soon as you came back, you made fun of the old man. Did you encounter something happy today and say it to make the old man happy? Although he had a quarrel with Qin Gu, old Li Wan didn't look angry at all. Instead, he happily chased Qin Gu and asked for the reason. Wan Lao, I'm probably leaving here, Qin Gu said to Lao Wan as she opened her own door. Lao Wan Lao Wan corrected the name of Qin Gu again and then asked, What's wrong, you can leave as soon as you say. Is it any bastard on this street who provoked you? Speak up and I'll teach him a lesson. My Lao Wan people, who dares to bully you? Watching Lao Wan jump around for a while, Qin Gu shook her head and said, No one is bullying me, it's just that I'm planning to go to Shenhua City. Shenhua City Why are you running so far? Lao Wan stopped his movements and asked Qin Gu strangely. Go and become a commander, Qin Gu pushed open the door and turned to Lao Wan. Unexpectedly, Lao Wan, who was still happy, suddenly changed his face and blushed all over his cheeks. Say it again, what are you going to do? Listening to Lao Wan's angry voice, Qin Gu was a bit puzzled and said, go and become a commander. I'll beat you to death, you brat. Be a damn commander. Lao Wan picked up the fan in his hand and slapped Qin Gu in the face, without mercy, end of this chapter. Chapter 5 Unforgettable Past You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 5 Unforgettable Past As night fell, an elderly woman pushed open the old shop door. However, as soon as she saw it, she became very angry and said, Lao Wan, how dare you drink? You don't want to live anymore. On the rocking chair in front of the woman, Lao Wan has lost his smile at noon. Now he is livid, holding a bottle of Baijiu in his hand, and his body is full of wine smell. On the stool next to him, Qin Gu sat there in a formal and orderly manner, but her messy hair and nose, which had solidified into blood scabs, looked a bit disheveled. Xiao Qin, what's wrong with you? Did you get beaten? The woman ignored Lao Wan and quickly ran to Qin Gu, caressing his face and asking. Qin Gu suppressed an ugly smile and said, No, I bumped into it myself. Humph, knock your butt, how could it be like that? It was me who hit it. Lao Wan beside him jumped up from the rocking chair and pointed at Qin Gu as he heard him lying. Lao Wan, you've grown up to handle it, haven't you? Ah. It's been drinking and hitting Xiao Qin again today, are you tired of living? The old woman stood up and pointed at Lao Wan's nose, cursing. If it were in normal times, encountering his wife like this, Lao Wan might have been hesitant, but today is different. He pointed at Qin Gu and said, what did this little brat do? Ah. You're going to become that damn commander. Ah, that thing is easy to handle. Instead of letting him die outside, it's better to let me kill him now. At least, others know where he's buried. After Lao Wan roared and said these words, the old woman took a trembling step back and let out a long sigh, Lao Wan, it's been so many years, it's time to forget. Forgot, how could you forget? That means you just forget it. Lao Wan suddenly choked up in his voice and roared with a crying voice, oh, it's all me. If he had broken his leg when he was going, and left him permanently disabled, I could have raised him for a lifetime. Now. It's been more than ten years, and I don't even know where the corpse capital is. How do you want me to forget it? And he. Lao Wan trembled as he pointed at the somewhat confused Qin Gu and shouted, Ah, we've been together for over a month, and just as we've developed a relationship, he gave me a sentence to become that damn commander. Isn't this a sin? Even if a little cat or dog dies, it would be heartbreaking. Now that a living person runs to die, can I ignore it? It's good if I don't kill him. Lao Wan finished speaking, let out a series of severe coughs, and then sat weakly on the rocking chair, staring blankly at the sky. Ah! Doing evil. The old woman looked at Lao Wan who had calmed down and let out a long sigh. 
She turned her head to Qin Gu and said, Xiao Qin, don't blame your uncle Wan. When it comes to this matter. Ah. Come with me. Qin Gu quickly stood up and followed the old woman's footsteps into the inner room. Passing over the house where the old couple usually lived, they walked to a door. The old woman opened the door with a heavy expression and casually turned on the light, revealing what was inside. The room is similar to the one Qin Gu currently lives in, with simple decorations such as a bed, a set of tables and chairs, and a wardrobe. But on that table, there is a photo frame with a black and white photo inside. The old woman walked in and took the black and white photo by the table, holding it in her hand. She said to Qin Gu who was following him, This is my eldest son, and he is also a commander. But since he went, except for sending back a photo and a few letters, there has been nothing else. When we learned about him again, it was a suicide note sent by the Maritime Bureau. They said it was written by my son before, because each commander would prepare a suicide note in advance. After arriving at the sea, I don't know what kind of danger would happen, so I was prepared. But the body is gone, and I heard it was buried in the sea with his ship mother. As the old woman spoke, tears gradually flowed down her face. Qin Gu stood behind the old woman for a moment, unsure of what to say, and could only slowly stroke her back to calm her mood. After a while, the old woman's mood finally calmed down and she smiled, but he is an excellent commander. Once he wrote a letter back, saying that he saved a ship of people. At that time, Lao Wan was very impressive among the neighbors, saying that his son was so good, so good, and his tail could even fly up to the sky. Also, one time he wrote a letter back. Qin Gu listened to the old woman's words next to her, occasionally responding with a mix of flavors in his heart. Looking at the old woman with graying temples, he couldn't help but want to say that I'm not going. But at that moment, the librarian's words rang in his ear, since you have found what you are looking for, don't lose it. Otherwise, if you want to find it again, you don't know how much time it will take. Yes, I have been confused for a long time. Since I have found my goal, I must not lose it. The time passed slowly tonight, and it was only around nine o'clock when Qin Gu finished washing up and returned to his room. He was packing his things while thinking about how to bid farewell to the old couple. Just then, a knock came from outside the room. Here we go. Qin Gu answered and opened the door, only to see Lao Wan standing at his doorstep with a straight face. After he opened the door, Lao Wan glanced into the room and then said to Qin Gu, Why? pack up so quickly. Are you planning to leave overnight? How could that be? Qin Gu said with a smile. Laugh so hard. Lao Wan glanced at Qin Gu and then sighed, do you know how to drink? Can a little. Qin Gu said hesitantly, after all, military academies prohibit alcohol, but is it decent for soldiers not to drink? So, I will do it, the big man is grinding and chirping. Lao Wan scolded, and then his tone softened. Your aunt has prepared a few dishes, come and have a drink with me. Okay. Qin Gu quickly pulled the door open and followed Lao Wan to the center of the yard. Sure enough, the lady had already prepared a few specialty dishes, and there was an unfinished bottle of wine on the table. Sit down. After Lao Wan sat down, he said to Qin Gu who was still standing at the table. Yes. Qin Gu quickly sat down, opened the wine on the table, and poured a glass for both Lao Wan and herself. When are you going to leave tomorrow? Lao Wan looked at the wine Qin Gu poured for him and sighed deeply. In the morning, Wan Lao, you know, there are only boats to Shenhua City available in the morning, Qin Gu said as she looked at Lao Wan. Lao Wan. Lao Wan glanced at Qin Gu, I really want to break your leg. I will come back alive. Qin Gu looked at Lao Wan and said firmly. Get lost, you know I don't want to hear this. Lao Wan roared as he patted the table. Finally, he picked up his glass and said to Qin Gu, I don't want you to come back, I just want you to be alive. Well, I will definitely live. I will definitely live well. 
Qin Guk picked up his glass and collided heavily with Lao Wan, then they drank it all in one gulp. Perhaps because Lao Wan drank a lot of alcohol in the afternoon and after drinking with Qin Gu for a while, he collapsed on the table. Qin Gu could only shake her head when she saw the situation and helped Lao Wan return to his room. Coming out of the inner room, Qin Gu smiled and drank the remaining wine in one gulp, while also tidying up the table before returning to the room and continuing to pack up her luggage. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Farewell you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 Farewell The next day, it was early morning, and due to yesterday's incident, today's breakfast stall did not open at all. Chin Gu got up early to wash his clothes, took the backpack he had packed yesterday, and walked straight towards the door. It wasn't that he wanted to leave without saying goodbye, but that he was afraid the two elderly people would be emotionally excited again. But as soon as I walked out of the store, I saw two familiar figures standing at the door, quietly watching him. Bunny, why do you want to leave without saying goodbye? Lao Wan looked very energetic today, and it seemed like he had changed into a new set of clothes, appearing several years younger. How could that be? I was just afraid that you two would be stimulated again, so I left a letter on the table, Qin Gu said awkwardly. You said it's great for you, this child, to stay. Auntie doesn't have a son anymore, so you can live with her, marry a wife, have a child, and live an ordinary life. Auntie said to Qin Gu, feeling particularly reluctant in her words. No wonder, since Qin Gu came to this shop, he has taken care of all the work inside and outside, and occasionally chats with the two elderly people to relieve boredom. After all, what he learned at school was how to be a good son of the people. Qin Gu dared not speak because the earnest words of the lady in front of him made him, who had lost his maternal love since childhood, somewhat reluctant. He dared not speak, afraid that he couldn't help but agree. He wanted to go home and return to his roots. Come on, don't try to persuade him. This kid, like our boss, is also a person who accepts death. Since he has made a decision, he can't even bring back the nine cows. Lao Wan grinned and stopped his wife's words, then said to the silent Qin Gu, You brat, haven't you forgotten what you said to me yesterday? No. I will definitely live well. Qin Gu said firmly to Lao Wan. Okay, since that's the case, then we won't advise you. Twenty years ago, it was in this place that I personally sent my boss away. Today, it's still this place, and I will personally send you away. But little bunny, remember to live well. Lao Wan said solemnly, then took off the backpack behind him and handed it to Qin Gu, this is what your aunt prepared for you on the way. Take it and don't starve to death on the road. Qin Gu quickly waved his hand and said, Wan Lao, what is this? Didn't we agree before? I just need to manage my food and accommodation when I work here, and I can't take anything else. Lao Wan Lao Wan glared at him, I'm not that damn local tycoon, and you're not the one who works for me. Just focus on food and shelter, no matter what else. Here you go, take it. Don't talk so much, be careful I'll break your leg and make it impossible for you to leave today. This. Qin Gu was a bit speechless. He couldn't have taken his previous discipline, but if he didn't take it, it would definitely be a bad day, so he was in a dilemma. Grinding and grinding. Lao Wan said, hanging his backpack directly around Qin Ji's neck. You can roll now. Lao Wan, if you speak well, you will die. The old lady said somewhat depressed, Xiao Qin is going to leave now, and he's still showing his donkey temper. Qin Gu smiled and said to his aunt, Auntie is fine. I know Wan Lao's temper, and he is also doing it for my good, so I won't take it to heart. Mm, it's good if you know, the lady said with a smile. Auntie, it's getting late too. Then I'll leave now, otherwise I won't be able to catch that passenger ship. Qin Gu looked at the sky and said to Auntie. Mm, mm, be careful on the way, the lady quickly said. Qin Gu glanced at Lao Wan, who was hesitant to speak, smiled and bowed to the two of them, 
then turned around and walked towards the main road in the distance. After walking for a long time, Lao Wan's voice came from behind. Live well. Qin Gu didn't turn back, but continued to walk, reaching out his right hand to shake his head, then tightly holding it and extending a thumb. So, I walked out of this street and disappeared into the street. This little rabbit, sigh. Lao Wan let out a long sigh, no longer having the stubbornness he had just had. You said you, Xiao Qin is about to leave, and you still have a stubborn temper on your face. At least treat them well and leave a good impression, said the old lady with a disdainful expression. What do you know? A woman, if I really talk to him like you, and he doesn't leave, what will I do? The most important thing in a person's life is to have a thought. He is like an eagle that has just flown out of a valley. It is the time to soar freely. If I trap him at this time, will he still be an eagle? The boss used to be like this before. Although he flew halfway and stumbled, he didn't regret going through such a journey on earth Lao Wan glanced at the old lady and defended himself. Okay, okay, it's all right with you. I'm just a woman. What do I understand? Then don't eat today, just starve me for a whole day. The lady said unhappily. Don't, I don't have a gatekeeper and just talk nonsense. You are the pillar of our family, the shopkeeper. Lao Wan quickly waved his hand and said. Humph. Lao Wan turned around to look at the old store behind him and said to himself, Honey, why don't we find a suitable buyer and sell this store? The two of us are also old and we won't be able to do anything soon. There's no one to help us with it now, so why don't we just sell it? Then take our savings and take a look around, preferably dying halfway through. Where are you going? The lady didn't get angry at Lao Wan's decision to sell a store, but asked him directly. I think the place in Shenhua City is good, otherwise we should choose that place, Lao Wan said with a smile. All right, you've been busy all your life, and you're finally remembered to take me out for a walk. Shenhua City is really good, let's go there for the first stop then. Auntie smiled and said. The two of them slowly walked into the store while laughing. However, Qin Gu can no longer see this scene. He is now accelerating towards the direction of the port. The civilian port area of this city is different from the port area used by the large fleet stationed here. Two are in different directions. Military ports face the sea directly and aim for faster access to any location. For civilian use, there are many considerations, first is transportation, and second is scale, so it is generally closer to the urban area. When Qin Gu arrived at the port, it was already dawn. He quickly bought a ticket from the ticket office to Shenhua City and successfully boarded the passenger ship. Because it takes two days to arrive in Shenhua City, Qin Gu bought a regular ticket when she boarded the ship, as the remaining money on her body did not support the expenses of first dot class class. And he is currently calculating whether he will need to find a part dot time job immediately after going to Shenhua City. Walking onto the deck of the passenger ship, Qin Gu did not immediately seek his berth, but stood on the railing next to the passenger ship, watching the busy port in the early morning. I casually opened the backpack that Lao Wan handed me and found that it contained breakfast prepared by the lady, two thick piles of money, and a letter. Qin Gu chuckled lightly and ignored the two thick piles of money, but opened the letter directly. Little rabbit, when you see this letter, you must have boarded the passenger ship in Shenhua City. The most regretful thing I have ever done in my life is to send my son to become a commander, but this is also the proudest thing of my life. Among these thousands of people, my son is the bravest one. He has done many things that people want to do but dare not do, so he is my pride. And today, I did the same thing again. I don't ask you to become an excellent commander, I just hope you can live well. Only by living can you have a future. If you die, then there is nothing left. The money in the bag was not given to you because we felt sorry for you, but because you deserve it for helping us with our work during this period, so you don't have to feel guilty in your heart. Finally, you must personally finish those mornings, as they were made by your aunt overnight. Lao Wan
Putting away the letters in her hand, Chin Gu took out the breakfast from her backpack and ate it in large gulps. Slowly, tears fell down, mixed in with breakfast, and Chin Gu ate them one by one. The warm feeling made Chin Gu feel that this flavor would be deeply remembered for a lifetime. As time passed, the passenger ship let out a long cry and slowly left the dock where it was docked. As the passenger ship drifted further away, the city behind it gradually became blurred. Goodbye, Minghai City. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Blue Root Commander's Academy. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 Blue Root Commander's Academy Woo Woo. Woo Woo. With two long cries, a huge passenger ship docked at the port of Shenhua City. And Qin Gu in the cabin also heard this sound. He had already packed his things this morning, nodded and greeted the passengers in the adjacent bunks, then picked up his things, followed the flow of passengers, and got off the ship together. Leaving the port, Qin Gu bought a map of Shenhua City from the book and magazine pavilion at the entrance. Compared to the previous city of Minghai, Shenhua City is obviously much larger and is said to be the largest city along the coast of Donghuang. However, it can also be understood that because the Blue Root Commander's Academy in Donghuang is located in Shenhua City, this is the place with the most commanders and the safest place along the coast of Donghuang. Opening the map, Qin Gu immediately saw the location of the Blue Root Commander's Academy, or rather, it was difficult not to see it, as it occupied the largest part of the map near the coast. Qin Gu had previously learned about the Commander's Academy, which has a very complex composition. As Su Xian said, not everyone can call it a commander. Facing those who hold lofty ideals but cannot become commanders, the Command Academy will not abandon them like this. So the Blue Root Commander's Academy is not only a place to train commanders, but also a place to train personnel related to scientific research, logistics, shipbuilding, and naval warfare. Enable those who cannot become commanders to strive for their lofty ideals. So the Blue Line Commander's Academy is also divided into several major regions, the first of which is the most extensive main school district, which is the place for training commanders and ship mothers. Because it involves practical operations such as exercises and training for the ship's mother, the land area here is the largest, and various facilities are also the best. The second region is the Science and Technology Zone, which cultivates scientific and technological talents. The communication facilities between commanders, image transmission data systems, sea coordinates, and a series of complex scientific research achievements are all produced from here. The third region is the shipyard construction area. Although human warships cannot compete with sirens, commanders are not ship maidens who can glide on the sea at any time, so traveling also requires ships. And now most of the command ships in Donghuang come from here. After completing their graduation tests, all commanders will receive their first command ship from here. The fourth region is the logistics supply area, which receives oil from land, ocean, and other sources every day. After being processed by special means, it becomes oil that can be used by the ship's mother. It can be said that this is the busiest area, with 24.hour shifts on duty, in order to enable all ship maidens to have combat power. After confirming the direction of the Blue Root Commander's Academy, Qin Gu waved and stopped a taxi at the entrance of the port, then headed towards the direction of the academy. The driver is a very enthusiastic person, and after learning about Qin Ji's whereabouts, he knows that he is not a local of Shenhua City. So all the way, I was introducing him to places in Shenhua where things are fun, delicious, and the most affordable. This made Qin Gu, who was new to Shenhua, have a better impression of this place. However far the journey is, there is also an end, let alone the fact that the Blue Root Commander's Academy is not far from the civilian port area. In the midst of chatting with the driver, they have unknowingly arrived at their destination. After getting off the car, Qin Gu also saw the entrance of the Commander's Academy on the Blue Route for the first time, and the majestic and towering huge anchor in the square in the middle of the entrance made him, a person from Earth, feel a bit strange for a moment. After all, there are also many such wonders on Earth, 
but there are still no ten-story ship anchors at the entrance of the college. With such novelty, Qin Guk crossed the square at the entrance and walked towards the direction of the gate. As the school had not yet started, the entrance to the college seemed very quiet. He came to the guard booth at the entrance and wanted to inquire about enrollment matters. Unexpectedly, the guard in the guard booth was not the one in my imagination, but a girl who looked like a junior high school student. Her sandy brown hair was tied into two ponytails, with a special 102 hairpin pinned to her bangs. She was wearing a white navy uniform, and a red pentagram was shining on her waist belt. Facing the girl who seemed familiar to him, Chin Gu smiled and said to her, Hello, may I bother you? Hmm. Are you? The girl looked at Chin Gu who suddenly appeared in front of her and asked with some confusion. Hello, my name is Chin Gu and I came here to become a commander. But I don't know the specific process, and it's almost time to register, so I came over to ask. Chin Gu smiled at the girl. Oh, it looks like this. My name is Fu Shun, the second destroyer of the Anshan class, Fu Shun. The girl, no, Fu Shun first introduced herself to Qin Gu, and Qin Gu was also surprised to see this girl. How could I not know the reputation of the Fu Shun ship? I didn't expect that when I came to point out the official trainees, I met her. Is this considered meeting old friends in a foreign land? What's wrong? Obviously, Fu Shun also noticed Qin Ji's surprised gaze, so he asked in confusion. It's nothing, I've seen an Anshan class destroyer before, so I was a bit surprised, Qin Gu said to Fu Shun. Finally, he silently added in his heart, museum. Oh, I see. That's not a big deal, because there are still many ships of the Anshan class in the world, and there's nothing strange about encountering them. Fu Shun smiled and said, Let's get down to business now. Hmm. Qin Gu nodded and listened attentively to Fu Shun's next words. To become a commander, you first need to pass the adaptability test between the commander and the mind cube, and then you can register to become an apprentice commander. Moreover, registering to become a commander does not require any expenses, and you can enjoy the monthly allowance from becoming a commander. Finally, you can learn and grow in this commander academy. If you don't pass, don't be discouraged. We also have training suitable for scientific research and logistics, and can contribute to the commander team of the Donghuang camp. Fu Shun said very succinctly. Then I would like to ask, how can I test my adaptability to the mind cube? Qin Gu asked. On the day of registration, when you come to the school gate, there will be specialized instruments to check the adaptability of the mind cube. Because you have the corresponding adaptability with the mind cube, you can summon your own ship mother from the mind cube. However, if you don't have the adaptability, then you can't summon her. Fu Shun explained to Qin Gu. I see. Qin Gu nodded and suddenly thought of the introduction letter given to him by Su Xian. He asked, what if you have another introduction letter written by a commander who has already graduated? Oh, do you have any introduction letters from other commanders? Fu Shun looked at Qin Gu with some surprise. According to her understanding, people who have introduction letters from other commanders usually don't ask such simple questions because the person who gave them the introduction letter must have already explained all the common questions to them clearly. And for those who have a letter of introduction, the first stop is usually the Maritime Bureau, not the entrance of the Command Academy. Well, there is. Qin Gu nodded and took out the letter of introduction that Su Xian had given her from her shirt pocket, handing it to Fu Shun. Fu Shun looked at the signature at the end of the introduction letter and softly read, Su Xian. Such a familiar name. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 When a fellow villager sees him, he stabs him in the back. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 when a fellow villager sees him, he stabs him in the back elegant music played in the office, and today the Prince of Wales sat in the armchair with a smile, holding a cup of black tea in his hand, leisurely spending this peaceful afternoon. Nowadays, the Commander's Academy has not yet started classes, and there is no disturbance like when I first graduated. 
My garden has also been repaired, and there is nothing more comfortable than these. But just as the Prince of Wales was thinking this, a ringing phone call disrupted the tranquility of the office. Wales, who was tasting black tea, frowned slightly, but soon stretched out again. He placed the tea cup on his desk and picked up the ringing phone. Hello, I'm Wales. Oh, I remember. Fu Shun shook the letter of introduction given to him by Qin Gu, so it's that person. Haha, <laughs> he even dares to write an introduction letter to the college. Cough, you call Qin Gu, right? Looking at Fu Shun, who suddenly became happy across from him, Qin Gu now had some doubts. Is Su Xian so famous among the commander trainees? But what does it mean that he dares to write an introduction letter to the college? What does this mean? With Fu Shen's question, Qin Gu nodded and said, That's right, my name is Qin Gu. Well, Qin Gu, because the commander who issued the introduction letter to you is somewhat special, I need to contact the internal staff of the school. You should come in and wait for a moment, shouldn't it be a problem? Fu Shen said to Qin Gu. No problem, but could you tell me where Commander Su Xian is special? Qin Gu asked as he looked at Fu Shun with a smile on his face. He now increasingly felt that there was something fishy about it. He was a great figure from last academic year, very impressive, explained Qin Gu, who looked somewhat puzzled in Fu Shun, while laughing. Influential figures Qin Gu recalled Su Xian's smiling face, but he didn't understand either. He could only nod and walked into the guard booth. Fu Shun, on the other hand, ran towards the school from the guard booth. When she was certain that she couldn't see her from the guard booth, she stopped and said, Hee hee, that guy Su Xian actually wrote a letter to the dean introducing the commander. Maybe he introduced his accomplices. I must inform the dean of this matter. Hello, I'm Wales. A mature and steady voice came from my phone, which was the Prince of Wales resting in the office. Dean, I'm sorry to bother you with your rest. I'm Fu Shun, Fu Shun said as he secretly looked at the guard booth in the distance. Oh Fu Shun, isn't it your turn to be on duty at the entrance of the college today? Why did you suddenly call me? Did something happen, said the Prince of Wales with a smile. She personally formulated the rotation table in the college, so she is very clear about Fu Shun's movements. Dean, there's something I need to report to you. Today, while I was on duty at the entrance, a stunned person came and said he was going to sign up for our college, but he had no idea about the registration process, so he came to me to inquire. As you know, I am very helpful, so I told him. Who knew he was carrying letters of introduction from other commanders, so I wanted to see who was so irresponsible that he didn't even give the most basic information to others. I found out that the letter of introduction was actually written by Su Xian. Fu Shun said to his phone in a lively and colorful voice, describing the process of her meeting with Qin Gu just now. He was full of energy. Personality is undoubtedly revealed. Who are you talking about? Su Xian. The Prince of Wales couldn't sit still and stood up from his chair. How dare he recommend a commander to the academy? That's right, the reaction I just heard was like this. That guy brought his own ship mother, Tang Si, and bombed the dean's favorite garden. He even ran away on the day of graduation without even saying sorry. Now he dares to introduce the commander to the academy in his own name. I think this foolish young man named Qin Gu must be his accomplice. Fu Shun quickly said in the voice of the Prince of Wales. The Prince of Wales was instantly amused by the soothing tone, hee hee, what do you think should be done? Fu Shun's eyes turned and he said, I think we should call the Maritime Bureau's Gendarmerie team directly now and have them come over to lock up this terrorist for a few days first. Poor heavens, Qin Gu is still thanking his fellow villager for taking care of him in the current security pavilion. Unexpectedly, he was sold and prepared to be locked up by the military police. This really confirms that statement, when a fellow villager sees a fellow villager, he stabs him in the back. Oh, in what name? Said the Prince of Wales with a smile. 
Of course, it was in the name of deliberately breaking the facilities of the Blue Root Commander's Academy, Fu Shun said with a smile. I said you, little Fu Shun, came to me from the bottom of your heart. Although he was introduced by Su Xian, there must be something remarkable about him being able to write letters and introduce someone to Su Xian even when he knew he had offended me. Now that I haven't figured out anything, I haven't even seen anyone, so I'm going to throw them into the prison of the gendarmerie. Did you finally come because you haven't found anyone to prank them during this period of vacation, and when you catch them, you try your best to trick them? The voice of the Prince of Wales became teasing, and why she had already understood the beginning and end of the matter. I don't have it, it's just that I feel sorry for the garden before the dean, Fu Shun said with a smile, not being careful about the embarrassment after being exposed. Humph I don't know what's on your mind. Speaking of which, is that person named Qin Gu still with you now, said the Prince of Wales. Yes, he is currently waiting for my reply in the guard room at the door, Fu Shun replied. The Prince of Wales paused for a moment and said, bring him to my office. After all, I have nothing to do this afternoon. I would like to see if Su Xian, who is now available, can personally write a letter of introduction to introduce the person. What are their strengths? Ah, isn't this against the rules? He's not the commander of our commander's academy yet, Fu Shun said cautiously to the Prince of Wales. Ha the entire Blue Root Commander's Academy, what I say is the rules, what else goes against the rules? The Prince of Wales smiled arrogantly, but she was not wrong. The Blue Root Commander's Academy is another independent entity outside the Donghuang Naval Command. The discourse power of every dean is the highest within this school, so every principle is also held by Jian Yang, because perhaps humans may develop selfishness due to power, but Jian Yang never does. Okay, you're the dean, I'll listen to you, Fu Shun said with a smile. Then she hung up the phone and walked towards the security booth at the school gate. In no time, I walked to the entrance of the security pavilion and opened it to see the slightly anticipated Qin Song inside. Qin Gu, I just reported your situation. The dean of our commander's academy, Prince of Wales, needs to see you. Come with me now, Fu Shun said with a smile at Qin Gu, completely devoid of her previous caution. Dean, see me. Qin Gu was a bit confused by this news at the moment. Can it be said that Su Xian's face is so big? It's not really his fault, it's like you went to the top university in China and then held someone else's recommendation letter. Originally, you had to follow the process to have someone else receive you, but suddenly the president of this school wanted to see you, so you definitely couldn't react immediately, that's right, come with me, Fu Shun said with a smile. Oh. Qin Gu nodded and followed Fu Shun's footsteps towards the inside of the college, end of this chapter. Chapter 9. Being Sold by Someone. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9. Being sold by someone the Prince of Wales, the second ship of the George V class battleship, had a rich life experience, but the most notable one was her sinking, which represented the end of the era of large ships and cannons. Perhaps there is a destiny in the world where Qin Gu is located, and the wreckage of the Prince of Wales was salvaged by some companies in his country. In this world, the Prince of Wales became the director of the Donghuang Blue Root Command Academy, which must be said to be a kind of unfortunate fate. As he walked with Fu Shun in the commander's academy, everything in sight made him feel novel and familiar. Familiarity is due to the fact that it is similar to the college he has stayed in for four years, both of which are places for learning. What is novel is the facilities here, which are obviously much more complex than the ones he has attended before. Walking straight in from the main road, Qin Gu could see a large building at a glance. In front of the building was a huge black stone tablet, which was engraved with the names of many people in rows. However, there were many blank spaces, which puzzled Qin Gu a bit. He then asked his colleague Fu Shun. Oh, the name of the commander who died in battle is engraved on that stone tablet. Because most of them were buried in the sea, the college specially built this stone tablet for them here and engraved their names to prove the achievements they once had to future generations. 
Fu Shun said this sentence, without the feeling of jumping off in the past, but with a slightly heavy voice. I see, Qin Gu nodded and took a deep look at the stone tablet. The name of Wan Lao's son should also be on the tablet, right? Qin Gu thought of it this way, but because the dean of this college was looking for him now, he didn't stop to carefully search for the name, but continued to follow Fu Shun forward. After going through several intersections, the two of them arrived at a place similar to a teaching building. After reaching the second floor, they stopped in front of a red wooden door on this side. There was a sign hanging on the wooden door, which read three words. Dean's Office With the knocking at Fu Shen's door, a very imposing voice came from inside, Please come in. Fu Shen pushed open the door and the two of them entered together. Qin Gu saw a beautiful woman with short golden hair and a red navy uniform sitting at a table in the office, holding black tea in her hand, looking up at the two of them. Hello Dean, this is the stunned person I just mentioned to you. His name is Qin Gu and it was a recommendation letter written by Su Xian. Fu Shun looked at the Prince of Wales with a smile and handed Su Xian's recommendation letter to him, but if she didn't have the lag in the middle, then everything would be perfect. The Prince of Wales smiled and looked up carefully at Qin Gu. He was very energetic and had no sense of panic in the face of himself. Under his increasingly heavy aura, there were very few young people who could do this. So the Prince of Wales nodded lightly and said to Qin Gu, Hello, I am the Dean of the Dongguang Blue Root Commanders College, Prince of Wales. You can call me Dean, even though you are not a student of the Commanders College yet. Hello Dean, I'm Qin Gu, Qin Gu nodded at the Prince of Wales and responded calmly. Well, did Commander Su Xian recommend you to study at the Commander's Academy? The Prince of Wales asked Qin Gu. Yes, Qin Gu responded. Well, since that's the case, why didn't he explain to you clearly what you need to pay attention to when entering the college? It's really irresponsible for you to directly approach the college with a recommendation letter, said the Prince of Wales as he looked at Qin Gu. Um. Actually, when Commander Su Xian wrote me a recommendation letter, I didn't intend to become a commander, so he just gave me the recommendation letter and told me whether to follow me when the Commander's Academy starts in September. Qin Gu answered truthfully. Oh, I didn't expect there to be such a layer of things inside. So since you didn't want to come back then, why do you want to come back now? What changed your mind, asked the Prince of Wales with great interest. Because in the past one or two months, I have learned a lot about commanders and ship women. This is a great profession with many great people, so I hope to become one of them, Qin Gu said. However, in this matter, he lied. His own goal was to go home, but it did not prevent him from wanting to become one of them. I see, even after learning about the high sacrifice rate of the commander, you still dare to come. I admire your courage, said the Prince of Wales solemnly. It is precisely because of you who are not afraid to die that the commander's academy has been established. You flattered me, Qin Gu said humbly. Don't be humble, this is the praise you deserve. The Prince of Wales smiled as he opened Su Xian's recommendation letter. I want to know what your relationship is with Commander Su Xian. He was my life.saving benefactor. At that time, I almost died at the muzzle of the Siren Destroyer. It was his mother, Tang Si, who saved me, and then they took me back to Minghai City. Qin Gu said solemnly. Oh, that means you're not familiar with Su Xian anymore. The Prince of Wales looked at Qin Gu in surprise. She didn't expect Qin Gu to not be Su Xian's acquaintance. So why did Qin Gu ask Su Xian to personally write a recommendation letter? So she took out the letter and quickly browsed through it. Looking at the Prince of Wales who was browsing the letter, Qin Gu did not answer her question. He believed that Su Xian had already explained everything in the letter. However, to his surprise, the Prince of Wales looked up at Qin Gu after reading the letter and asked, Su Xian said, will you compensate him after you become a commander? Ah! Qin Gu instantly opened her mouth wide, what money? Hm Tang Si, the mother of Su Xian's ship, 
bombed my garden on the day of the graduation ceremony. I didn't punish him directly because I had to attend the graduation ceremony, but who knew he slipped away after attending the ceremony, so I paid for the repair of the destroyed garden myself. And he said in the letter that after you become the commander, you will repay him the compensation he deserves. The Prince of Wales smiled thoughtfully at Qin Gu, can I understand that you have already been sold by Su Xian to the commander's academy? Ah! Qin Gu was confused. He didn't expect things to turn out like this. He had just walked into the gate of the commander's academy, and before he could do anything, he was already in debt, and still had to pay it off, end of this chapter. Chapter 10 Putting Ducks on the Shelf You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Putting Ducks on the Shelf So, how much more money do we need? Qin Gu asked the Prince of Wales speechlessly. Although he was feeling depressed now, the best way to solve the problem now was to stay at the commander's academy, and then when he met Su Xian, he would give him a hard blow. Not much, just over three million Donghuang coins, said the Prince of Wales with a relaxed tone. Ha! More than three million Donghuang coins. It's better to just kill me directly. Besides, why is the garden so expensive? Qin Gu said with a big mouth, finally knowing why Su Xian ran away after attending the graduation ceremony. When will he return the three million Donghuang coins? The value of Donghuang coins in this world is basically the same as the currency in his original world. The monthly income of ordinary people is between 400 and 50 hundred Donghuang coins. Although the commander's allowance can be higher, it is not too outrageous. The monthly allowance is only 10,000 Donghuang coins. He doesn't have to rely on subsidies to pay off the 3 million Donghuang coins. It will take him 25 years to repay them. It's really better to kill him directly. That garden was specially cultivated by my friends from the royal family when they came to visit me in Donghuang, including the fish inside. As you know, it's not easy to travel from the royal family to Donghuang now, so three million is definitely not much, Prince Wales explained to Qin Gu. Dot. Qin Gu is speechless. Young people, don't be so unconfident. It's just three million Donghuang coins. And you can also choose not to pay it back. It's just that you can't be a commander, and there's no difference. It's good to be an ordinary person, said the Prince of Wales with a smile. Without proper command, one cannot contact the ship maidens. Without contact with the ship maidens, one does not know why they possess the historical memory and name of their own world. However, this world has emerged, and one cannot find a way to return home. So making him give up being a commander is the least acceptable thing for Qin Gu, so this money, I still. Qin Gu let out a long sigh and said to the Prince of Wales. Don't look so desperate. You were also sold and a victim, and I can understand. So, is it true that Su Xian said in the letter that you have studied naval warfare theory? The Prince of Wales changed his tone and asked. I have some knowledge, but I dare not say I am proficient, Qin Gu replied. In the original world, he studied the theoretical research of campaign tactics methodology, but now in this world, all ships have become girls, and conventional campaign tactics methodology theories are no longer applicable to them. Therefore, he can only say that he understands some, but cannot say that he is proficient. So I have a question for you, what is the most important thing for both the enemy and us on the battlefield? asked the Prince of Wales. Intelligence. Qin Gu blurted out. Knowing oneself and the enemy, one is invincible in a hundred battles. This statement applies to any form of combat, so intelligence is definitely the most important thing in any war. In an environment of unequal intelligence, there are countless battles where less wins more and weaker wins stronger. The Prince of Wales nodded and asked again, so which type of naval vessel is the most important? Qin Gu hesitated for a moment and said to the Prince of Wales, I believe that the tasks carried out by each type of naval vessel are very crucial. However, if we generalize which type of vessel is the most important, 
then I think it is an aircraft carrier. Oh, why, asked the Prince of Wales. Chin Gu really wanted to roll his eyes and say to the Prince of Wales, you don't even know how you died. But he absolutely dared not say this, so he solemnly replied, in naval campaigns, the most important things are air and sea control, and aircraft carriers are born to obtain combat air control. The purpose of seizing combat air control is to ensure the air safety of our various branches and services, important targets, and main combat operations, protect our side from or less harm from enemy air, which will play a decisive role in a battle. And with air control, we have more intelligence from the enemy and the decisive conditions for victory. After hearing Qin Ji's explanation, the Prince of Wales nodded and said, you're right, but not entirely right. Battle control is equally important, and battleships are the most decisive factor in obtaining battle control. However, you answered my question very accurately and put forward your own opinion, which is very good. It seems that what Su Exian mentioned in the letter is not just exaggeration. You do have a unique understanding of the theory of battle tactics. Thank you, Qin Gu said humbly. No need to thank you, our commander's academy lacks someone like you who is very proficient in the theory of battle tactics. The Prince of Wales smiled and turned his head to look at Fu Shun, who had already been a bit stunned. Fu Shun, go downstairs and bring up the applicability testing device for the mind cube. Yes. Fu Shun quickly replied, then turned around and walked out of the office. The Prince of Wales turned to Qin Gu and said, there is actually another way for you to quickly repay this money, which is to stay at school as a teaching assistant. Ha! Qin Gu was speechless. Dean, I didn't say before that I was just a little rough in the theory of battle tactics and not proficient enough. If I were to be a teaching assistant, wouldn't that be harmful? Actually, I don't want this either. The teacher who used to teach battle tactics theory couldn't come back to the inland province for a period of time, so I had to find someone to replace him. But finding someone to replace him wouldn't be suitable. He wouldn't let me personally go on stage to teach new students battle tactics theory, after all, I have other work to do. The Prince of Wales looked at Qin Gu helplessly. But you can't choose me either, after all, I'm not a member of the Commander's Academy yet. Qin Gu said in silence. So I asked Fu Shun to get the Mind Cube Adaptation Detection Device. You can check it later. If the adaptation rate is qualified, then you are the new Commander's Academy student, and that's my subordinate. With your current theoretical level, you can teach a group of Commander's Academy students who don't understand anything, and it's more than enough. If the adaptation rate is not qualified, then I can hire you as a temporary teaching assistant for Commander's Academy. When the professor returns, you can transfer to the nearby research area to continue your studies. The Prince of Wales smiled. Dean, you're really pushing ducks onto the shelves. Qin Gu looked at the Prince of Wales and said. Three million, said the Prince of Wales, with a mocking smile in his eyes. Don't, I'll do it. Can't I do it yet? Qin Gu quickly responded, waving her hands. Just as he finished speaking, Fu Shun walked in from the door holding a machine for the dispute in this chapter, I will explain a few sentences here. The protagonist's goal is to find their way home through the ship's mother. If you can't enter the college, then you won't be able to get in touch with the ship girl, and naturally you won't be able to return home, which is a prerequisite for everything. 2. Please do not use your current thoughts to measure a soldier or the quality of a soldier 3. Think about it, the protagonist is a soldier who has no identity in this world. Su Xian, as mentioned earlier, is not foolish either. He has already raised his doubts while talking to Tang Si. If the protagonist doesn't go to the commander's academy, then being just an ordinary person doesn't pose much harm to society. If the protagonist goes to the command academy, then this letter will naturally be seen by the people of the command academy, and they will take the protagonist seriously. For, even if an outsider does not have a household registration, can you make it in today's society? Does serving in the military not require political review? 5. Before understanding the plot arrangement, 
please continue reading with questions, and the following will naturally explain why. If you want to force, please go to the comment section. End of this chapter.